Hello, Root of the Dick Coughlin 616, how are you? And this is a video response to Onision. Now, before I get started, I realise that Onision is one of those YouTubers who, whenever I make a video response to them, I always get people asking me, why are you making a response and even bothering with this dickhead? Or words to that effect. Well, you see, the great thing about Onision is he's one of these YouTubers who, no matter what the discussion or the argument is, I can respond to him and it's almost impossible to not look good in any way whatsoever. And that's just a good way to fuel and sort of stroke my own ego. I mean, the only reason Onision is as popular as he is, is, is simply because he's not that bad to look at from an aesthetic point of view. I mean, do you honestly think Onision would have 750,000 subscribers and still get people watching his videos if he looked like Brett Keane? I mean, he acts like him. Greg recently made a video on his Onision Speaks channel uh, covering his uh, fourth favourite subject to talk about after himself, his relationships and his people who don't like him, and that is vegetarianism. In the video, Greg challenges people to watch all of his videos on vegetarianism and come up with an argument that he hasn't used or addressed in any way. Obviously, that's a bit of a cheeky challenge on the basis that in order to watch all of Greg's videos on vegetarianism, you would need to take the week off fucking work. And so I haven't seen all of them, but I have seen enough, and I know Greg, Greg's character and personality well enough to know how I can respond to this. Now, I'm not a vegetarian, but I did spend nine months as one in the year of 2009, and I never talked about it openly unless I was asked about it by people. Now, there are only two real reasons to become vegetarian in the first place. First one is health reasons, like the doctor says I fucking can't touch a kebab anymore, or the other one is for ethical reasons, you know, as you feel that this in some way is going to help um, diminish in some way the suffering of animals who are going through you know, high intense process farming and such. You know, that's the only reason to do it. Now, I was an ethical vegetarian. It took me a while to make the decision to do it. Uh, I, I spent many, many months pondering, uh, you know, it's coming up with a justifiably good reason to carry on eating meat uh, that, I could, that I could sort of explain. And I, I always found myself lacking in that certain area. Usually the initial reaction and the real main excuse people give is, well, I like it, it tastes good, I like meat. That's fine, but that's not a reason to do something. That's an explanation as to why you do it. I also know from personal experience that I like it, it makes me feel good, is the first reason given by any junkie to justify their intaking of any narcotic that they might prefer. So I decided to stop eating meat. And to be honest, I did really feel good about it. And it was actually the the pro-meat eating arguments that I found incredibly lacking. Uh, you know, things like, well, other animals do it, other animals eat meat. Well, obviously, other animals do it. The problem with this argument is it breaks down as soon as you consider the many things that animals do that we don't. We don't eat our own young. You know, we don't bite the heads off our partners after we've finished having sex with them. Well, again, some of us don't. Just because animals do it is not a reason for we to, us to do it. We're, you know, we're intelligent beings. We, you know, have got a higher level of understanding of what we can communicate our suffering and pain a lot better than animals can. And also, they need to. A lion needs to hunt and kill to eat. We don't. Then people bring up the idea that it doesn't matter what you do in life, inevitably you, know, you are going to cause suffering and lead, your, your existence is going to lead to the death of animals. I mean, I, I'm, I'm seeing a building that was no doubt built, there were no doubt animals of some description that were displaced or killed because of the fact that I'm here in, um, it, it's staying here in this, in this house now. But uh, again, yes, you're right, indirectly or directly, there are going to be animals, are, are we going to, bump into each other at some point. There is going to be suffering caused. That's not an argument as to not do, uh, to not try anything whatsoever. I mean, the argument seems to be, unless you're going to take it to the extreme, and I'm going to go and live in a tree and eat nettles, and just wear fucking a you know, dock leave bikini for the rest of my fucking life, um, that I'm, I shouldn't even bother doing, even trying doing vegetarianism. Which is kind of weird, it's like saying, there's a homeless guy on the end of my street who's hungry, I'm going to give him a sandwich, and you saying, well what's the fucking point in giving him a fucking sandwich? You know, there's, lo there's still billions of people starving around the world. It doesn't make any sense. Just because I, I'm vegetarian does not mean I'm suggesting we all go and live as wild men in the fucking jungle, okay? And to suggest that you're not, you're being a hypocrite unless you do, it is kind of fucking stupid and missing the point, right? Anything that diminishes suffering, you know, it should necessarily 
be a good thing. I mean, you, you might as well use that same argument. Just because there's animals are going to suffer no matter what, that doesn't mean that you can go out of your way to make any more animals suffer. I mean, that's like saying it's okay for me to go outside now and kick a dog in the head because animals are suffering anyway, so what's one more gonna, difference going to make? Well, it makes a difference to that animal. You know what I mean? Then people will argue that it's okay to eat animals because animals are on a different level of consciousness or understanding um, than us or uh, intelligence than us. And I understand that to, a, to an extent, but then you've got to argue that you could make the argument there's a lot of human beings out there who are mentally and physically in a much more diminished state or a much less well-off state than a lot of animals. I mean, if you've got a guy who's you know, severely mentally disabled to the point where he's almost completely self-unaware and he's paralysed in a wheelchair, is it okay to eat his legs? I mean, if you're hungry, I mean, he won't miss them and he won't notice. And he's not, he's not going to notice if you cut his leg off, so is it okay to do that? And if not, why not? I mean, why then is it okay to eat an animal that, that might be more intelligent than him? All things considered, the only good argument I could come up with for eating meat was that I wanted to which isn't really an argument at all, and so, based on that, I thought, I'm going to give vegetarianism a go. Now, you might be saying, well, why didn't it last? Well, it didn't last because I'm weak. Um, I'm an addict by nature. I, I, I missed eating meat. Um, I actually remember it was when I went to America, um, where, for the, in 2009. I went to, that's when I sort of knocked it on the head, because I was like, how the fuck can I carry on eating? I'm in America. I'm going to live on eggs for two weeks. So I went there, and, uh, and I started eating meat again. And uh, I'm not proud of it, I'm not, so it's not something I'm, it, it, I feel good about, and I won't defend it either. I'm not going to defend the fact that I do it, because there is no defence of it, in my opinion. To me, eating meat is a bit like smoking, you know, even when I smoked, I smoked for 17 years. But I'm not going to sit here and uh, say, oh, you know, smoking, smoking's a good thing, smoking's something you should try, you should, no, no, I'm not going to defend smoking. I did it. But I, and the same thing with meaty. That's the way I look at it. Now I realise, Greg, that all of the arguments I've just mentioned have been covered in your videos at some point. So you're probably asking, well, why the fuck am I bringing them up? Well, you see, the reason I never talked about being a vegetarian and my reasons for being one was because of people like you, Greg. Not specifically you, but people like you. You see... Vegetarians have this really bad reputation in general for being pretentious arseholes and you know, stuck up arrogant pricks who think that they're on a higher plane of consciousness and they're sort of more evolved human beings than people who eat meat. They look down on people who eat meat like that and they, they try their best to make them feel bad and sort of you know, sneer, sneer and look down their fucking nose at everybody. Now I made a promise to myself when I started eating meat that I would not be one of those vegetarians. And I wasn't. And guess what? It wasn't a big deal. When people asked me about it, I told them. And actually what I found out was, it's actually uh, the meat eaters are just as fucking bad uh, as the vegetarians when it comes to being aggressive about their position. I would simply, there were some people who simply upon hearing that I was vegetarian, would start getting defensive and fuck go on the and go on the fence with me and go oh yeah what's your fucking way oh, I like you mate ar, 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 and start rubbing it in my face and I hadn't made any they just naturally assumed that I was vegetarian that I was going to give them a hard fucking time about it but that wasn't the case I you know I don't want to make any I don't want to sit here and be one of those vegetarians I didn't want to so I'm not going to be the same way I'm not going to be one of those fucking meat eaters and when people ask me about it I explained it to them in the way that I've just done in this video and guess what they were quite receptive to it you know they might not have changed their position but they were receptive enough so that they would actually go away and have something to think about you've planted a seed because you're asking people if you want to convert people to vegetarianism you're asking them to make a huge lifestyle change it's not something it's something different like wearing a different style of clothing or getting your hair cut this is a major shift you've got to accept there's going to be problems arising in your life you've got to change your diet you've got to make sure that you know you have got to understand the fact that when you go to a restaurant there's going to be less options available to you you've got to look carefully at everything you eat and buy in when you go to a dinner party you've got to be that pain in the ass who they've got to make a special fucking meal for you know what i mean you see greg an argument doesn't just consist of words and you can't just expect human beings to look objectively upon the, the, but just the words that are consisting your argument. You can't expect them to look at it without emotion. The, probably the most important part of any argument is the presentation. And it's the presentation, Greg, that you fucking suck at. 
When you make a video and you refer to meat eaters as murderers, rapists, cannibals, and state that you hope they get run over by a car and suffer in constant pain, do you seriously expect people to sit there and like you? Do you expect them to sit there and take you seriously? Do you expect them to sit there and actually feel that they're in any way empathetic towards you and think, hey, maybe this guy's got a point? No, they're going to think, what a fucking dick you are. Fuck you, I'm not a rapist or a child molester. Go fuck yourself, cunt. If you want to convince people to make a significant change in their life, it's probably a good idea not to make them hate your fucking guts first off. Now, you're an atheist, Greg. Would you find yourself more likely to believe in God if some ranting, hate-filled preacher came up and ran into your face and said, you're a sinner, you're evil, you're disgusting, you've got no morality, no code of everything, you're going to go hell and burn? Would that change your mind about God? No. Not that saying one who'd be moderate would necessarily change your mind, but it might make you think a little bit more clearly about it. You might not be so fucking... You know, you might not jump back at it and feel so, so much aggression in your fucking face. Opens up a chance of discussion. You've got thousands of subscribers, Greg. Thousands and thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. You've got the opportunity to influence them. And you choose not to, right? So when people watch your videos, Greg, what they do is they come away thinking, well, if being a vegetarian means I'm going to turn into this fucking cunt, I, I will, I'd rather eat meat until the cows come home. In fact, I will eat the cows when they fucking come home. That's the way it goes, Greg. I used to watch your video. You know, it takes one three-minute video on vegetarianism from you, and I have this overwhelming urge not just to carry on eating meat, but to go out and jump on kittens' heads, and then pick up the heads of the kittens, and then rip them off, and then drink their blood, and then or drink blood of 50 kittens, and then I'm going to go to Linda McCartney's grave and vomit up the kitten blood all over her tombstone whilst masturbating and punching a donkey, right? That's what I'm going to fucking do. That's the argument you have never fucking addressed. That's the argument you've never used, Greg. Why should anyone want to become a vegetarian if the cost of it is their own humanity? Which is what you make people believe. Richard the Dick Coughlin, 616. Good night, mate. God be less.